How are you feeling about 20? 2018. It's not even 2018. How are you feeling about February? Right. Well, I think that uh, it's, um, we've, we've gone through a period of turmoil and we're back to a period of calm, as you just mentioned. Uh, my rather maybe disappointing take on that is that the calm won't last. I think there are a number of reasons why we've moved into a higher volatility regime. Uh, people are a lot more concerned about um, inflation generally in central bank policy. Uh, and I think they have a lot more uncertainty, too, about flows. So we've seen some data which suggests that money is coming out of, say, the, the riskier assets. The, this week we had some data showing that uh, figures were definitely coming out of uh, the U.S. high yield market, for example. So I think that, that money flows is one big issue. I think the second big issue is supply. Uh, everybody is now waking up to the fact that government supply government supply net of central bank purchases is going to be much bigger this year. And so there's a feeling that that kind of riskless supply will crowd out the money available for riskier assets. And so I think that will also contribute to a lot more volatility, not just in February, but through the rest of You're the year. You're a corporate credit guy. What does this mean for you? Well, in corporate credit, I think volatility is always a bad thing. Uh, the, probably the strongest relationship between corporate spreads and anything is corporate spreads and implied volatility. So as implied volatility, as, as realized volatility rises, implied volatility rises too, and corporate credit spreads will have a tendency to go wider. So I think that's going to be the theme this year. Yeah. On inflation, I mean, there's clearly a perception that inflation is picking up. You look at expectations, various indicators. Do you buy into it, or is this another false storm? We've had many, haven't we? We have had many. What, what, why is this time different? Well, I think it's, it's not so much inflation in and of itself that's the key for people. It's rather the central bank reaction to a normalising level of yeah. inflation. I mean, if we were talking about the levels of inflation that uh, uh, we're forecasting or people are expecting, say, seven or eight years ago, people would have laughed because these levels of inflation are much lower than the kind of historic levels of inflation. But we also have unbelievably low uh, uh, interest rates and central banks who've been very, very involved in the markets, as we just talked about in terms of the Bank of Japan. Mm. And it's that normalization which I think is worrying people a lot. Yeah, 3% U.S. 10-year yield. A lot have said it's like, it's like sort of Dow 20,000, right. Dow 25,000, U.S. 10-year yield, 3%. What does it mean, guys? Is it just a number, or does it have wider ripple effects, significances? In and of itself, it doesn't have wider in impact, but I think it's... Uh, it, it People will, will, will see that the, uh, that the yields keep going up and we'll look at the returns and we'll see the negative returns that have been generated in the asset class so far this year. And that will have a tendency to accelerate the flows, to make the flows continue out of, of governments. So again, it gets into a bit of a problem here because we're going to have more supply and people are going to be more nervous about the asset class because the returns have not been very good. How is that supply going to be met? And, and what impact is it going to have if yields continue to go up on other risky assets.